we talk now? I've been waiting for a super long time. You really are Perry, aren't you? I haven't seen you in so long. How come you're all grown up? Wait, did I somehow travel to the future on accident? Or am I dreaming? <sighs> what a long dream. Neither. You died, Clairvy. That's what happened. You could've at least sugarcoated it a little! Look, she said speechless! Uh, oh. Okay, then. Huh? That's it? You accepted it just like that? Yep. If that's what Perry says happened, then I believe her. Perry wouldn't lie to me. Plus, I don't really need to know why I'm like this. I'm more curious about what happens in the future. If you're a harbinger now, Perry, that means Mother is gone, isn't she? Can you tell me about it? I want to know what happened to her. And to me. You never stopped trying to defy fate. At first, no one believed you. You could only vent your frustrations to the moon. In fact, you often sought comfort in the night sky. You wanted to see the aurora. So one night, we promised each other we would go to Snezhnaya to see it together. Later on, you tried to run away, but you were brought back each time. Mother spared your life, but it wasn't out of kindness. Instead, she decided to make an example of you by slowly torturing you over time. That way, the other children would know what happens to traitors. Still, you never gave up. Mother hoped that through ruthless duel after ruthless duel, she would be able to crown an ultimate victor among the children she raised. But you called on everyone to unite, to fight to a draw in order to reduce casualties. Your efforts may have only delayed the inevitable, but still. You gave them hope. You tried everything you could think of, but every attempt ended in failure. Still, you never turned your sword on Crucibina, and you never turned it on me. On that gloomy day, you told me, for the last 16 years of my life, I've done everything I can to fight for freedom. But now, I realize that the only freedom I truly possess is the freedom to choose to die. I never imagined I would say something like that. I must have been feeling really worn down. But somehow, I still think I understand. According to Mother's plan, only one of us was going to make it until the end. And I always hoped that person would be you. If I could do it all over again, I still don't think I would make a different choice. Even when I first met you, I knew you'd be able to do what I couldn't. Is that so? Even now, I'm not sure I truly understand what kind of freedom you were trying to pursue. But as the head of the House of the Hearth, and as the children's father, I've tried to give them the most basic of freedoms. The freedom to choose their own fate. It's something I discussed with the Udex of Fontaine. The children who want to leave the house will have their memories wiped clean of all secrets pertaining to the organization. In return, they will be allowed to live a normal life in Fontaine without being prosecuted for their past. Of course, I won't simply hand freedom to them on a silver platter. They have to fight for it and prove themselves worthy of it. Only freedom that is earned has true value. That's more than enough. That's exactly the kind of life I was fighting for. You know, Perry, 
I think you're a pretty amazing king, and a really great father, too. I'm really happy that you're the one who took over the house. I guess I do have one regret, though. I still haven't seen the outside world. Well, it just so happens that our dear guests over here have been to many nations and traveled to countless places. Perhaps they would be willing to tell you what the outside world is like. Really? Of course! We've traveled all over the place! We've got so many stories, we could probably talk your ears off for three days straight! You know, I used to dream of being a bard. Playing the lute while singing into the winds of freedom. <laughs> Even if there was no one there to listen, I would have continued to sing no matter what. Ah, that's where Mora comes from. I never knew that before. If I had some Mora, I would buy three new dresses. One for me, one for Perry, and one for Mother. It's just too bad Perry doesn't like wearing dresses. And Mother? Well, she probably wouldn't accept something like that either. Hey, <laughs> I guess I'd just have to keep them all for me then. I could wear a different one every day. Those yokai you mentioned, what do they look like? I once saw a drawing of this one guy with horns on his head and a super scary face. Are there any yokai like that? Oh, sounds like you're talking about an oni. Yep, we've met one, and let Paimon tell you, they're not nearly as scary as they look. I was always too afraid to skip Mother's fighting lessons. But at the Academia, I bet you could do all sorts of secret things in class. Things that have nothing to do with studying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Being able to study whatever you want without having to fear for your life actually sounds pretty great. The situation was super dangerous. Lenny and Lynette were accused of committing a crime, and they were going to have to stand trial at the Opera Epiclès. Oh no, that must have been hard for all of you. What happened next? Don't worry, we were able to turn the situation around super quickly, all thanks to Detective Paimon, of course. <laughs> How'd you do that? Come on, tell me. <clears throat> okay, so it was like this. After the failed magic show, we rushed to the scene and... Shadows don't have the capacity to learn or grow. Any new information they encounter is quickly forgotten over time. 